Imagine a colossal bird of war soaring through the skies like a majestic creature that has captured the imagination of pilots and enthusiasts alike. A magnificent beast named the Tupolev Tu-160 and referred to as Blackjack by its western counterparts. This feathered giant, with its graceful yet menacing presence, stands as the world's largest operational bomber, dwarfing its competitors and taking the art of aerial warfare to new heights. The Tu-160 reigns supreme as the largest operational bomber on the planet, dwarfing its similar-looking counterpart, the B-1B Lancer, with its sheer size and might. But it's not just about size, it's about versatility. Unlike its peers, the Tu-160 bomber excels at both low-level penetration, slicing through the air at transonic speeds and high-level penetration at a mind-boggling speed of up to Mach 1.9. One might expect a beast of this caliber to be equipped with cutting-edge technology, but the Tu-160 has a surprising mix of old and new. While it boasts a fly-by-wire control system, its cockpit displays are a throwback to the analog era, devoid of multi-function or head-up displays. A long, pointed radome houses its terrain-following and attack radar, while a forward-looking TV camera takes charge of visual weapon aiming. The story of the Tu-160 is one of patience and determination. Its prototype first took flight in 1981, but the journey was marred by setbacks, including the loss of the second aircraft in 1987. Finally, in 1987, the first operational Tu-160 took to the skies. The production, carried out in Kazan, continued until 1992, when the Russian president at the time, Boris Yeltsin, made a historic announcement no more strategic bombers would be built. In total, 35 blackjacks, including two prototypes, were constructed, with a few incomplete airframes left behind. This bomber came at an astronomical cost, both to build and maintain. The Tu-160 boasts an astonishing range of 12,300 kilometers, making it the second Soviet bomber after the Tu-95, capable of reaching the United States without in-flight refueling, However, its hefty price tag meant it could never truly replace the aging 295. Powering this behemoth are four NK-32 afterburning turbofan engines, each producing a staggering 245 kilonewtons of thrust in afterburner mode. The NK-32 holds the honor of being the largest and most powerful engine ever fitted to a combat aircraft. In 1989, the Tu-160 achieved a blistering speed of 2,200 kilometers per hour for the first time. However, to extend the service lives of both engines and airframes, its maximum speed was later limited to 2,000 kilometers per hour. This magnificent beast holds a total of 44 world records, a testament to its unmatched prowess. Even after entering service, the Tu-160 faced challenges that hindered operations. Production commenced before a common standard and configuration were established, resulting in variations in wingspans, equipment, and intake configurations across different aircraft. The firepower of the Blackjack is equally awe-inspiring. Armed with KH-55 cruise missiles and KH-15 air-to-surface missiles, it can carry up to 12 KH-55 missiles and 24 KH-15 missiles, all capable of carrying nuclear warheads. These devastating munitions are stored in two internal weapon bays. While it's claimed that the Tu-160 has a reduced radar cross-section, it's by no means a stealthy aircraft, making it a formidable adversary in the skies. The Tu-160's history has been marked by geopolitical shifts. In 1987, 19 Tu-160s were delivered to the 184th Guards Heavy Bomber Aviation Regiment at Priluki, Ukraine. These bombers remained in Ukraine after the dissolution of the USSR in 1991, sparking negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. Ultimately, eight were returned to Russia in 1999, while the rest met their fate under a contract issued by the U.S. government, facing the scrapping process in 1998. In 2001, the Tu-160 found a new lease on life as six Russian Tupolev Tu-160s were declared operational as air-launched cruise missile carriers under the START Treaty. These were stationed with the 121st Guards Heavy Bomber Aviation Regiment at Engels. The Engels Air Force Base became the sole operating location for these strategic bombers. By 2007, 
A total of 14 Tu-160s were stationed there, but the actual number of combat-ready aircraft remained a mystery. Up to a dozen additional airframes were nominally serviceable, but Russia faced financial constraints in reworking them. As of 2017, a total of 16 Tu-160 bombers were operational with the Russian Air Force, with one upgraded to the Tu-160M standard. The year 2018 marked a significant milestone with the signing of a contract for the production of 10 newly built Tu-160M2 bombers. The world held its breath as the first of these newly forged giants took its inaugural flight in 2022, promising a future where the white swan would continue to rule the skies. In an age of advanced technology and ever-evolving aviation, the Tu-160 stands as a reminder of the enduring power of human innovation, a majestic guardian of the skies, and a symbol of military might. The white swan will continue to soar, casting its imposing shadow over the world below. Yeah.